Good afternoon, good evening, good day to everyone. I've got uh, Deepak Sinha with me. Deepak is a marine engineer. He was sailing as first engineer and he's working with Lloyds. And this video is about a certain certification which is can help you to transition ashore, can help you to add value to your profile, can help you to gain better network. Right. So welcome uh, uh, Deepak on, on this. Thank you, Carlo. Yeah. Uh, discussion and so if you can tell a little bit about yourself uh, you know when did you start sailing which were your companies and just a quick um, uh, brief about yeah. you uh, I finished I did my graduation uh, in uh, marine engineering from Tolani uh, Maritime Institute in 2011 and uh, since carriage ship I was sailing on LNG ships and uh, I raised up to the rank of first engineer when I had this, uh, that time my kid was start, had started growing up. So that was my primary concern, like most seafarers, to switch a show. And I started hunt in my job hunt in uh, 2022. So by the, it took me around seven to eight months and I landed in a job with Lloyd's Register. So wow. currently I'm a, a senior specialist uh, in the first entry team. And mm -hmm. we look after the, we are like the back end of the surveys. So oh, we look after the uh, back end part, uh, like all the service status, uh, all the CMS items and anything which is class related that has been prepared by a first entry person. Right, right. Great, great. Good to know, Deepak. And uh, so um, how did this idea of, you know, doing an additional certification come to you? And, you know, what are the certifications that you might have looked at? And why did you zero on one particular one, which is the Chartered yeah. Engineer one, please? So uh, basically what happens is in every classification society, because of the RO code, they want all their technical staffs to be at the highest professional levels. And uh, every classification society, uh, also many other organizations, while I was looking for my shore jobs, I was also looking for, I had not, not kept local location or a bar. So I was looking all around the world. And uh, since I was on LNG ships, I wanted to go into something LNG with LNG background or LNG industry. And most of the places, my application was getting rejected due to two reasons. One, I cannot do anything about it. That was that you don't have a work permit. And the second reason was that you don't have a professional engineer license or a chartered engineer license. So this certification, which I just did, is about uh, is a chartered engineer. There is another uh, uh, this thing, another license, which is called professional engineer. And uh, I did it with the, the Institute of Engineers India, IEI. Uh, it has been around for 90 to 100 years, but uh, it is not very common with marine engineer amongst marine engineers. It is more common with the civil engineers mechanical engineers who are working in the government sector inside India. So other certification, when I looked for, uh, I was applying for jobs for UK, US, Canada, and everywhere they only allow a chartered or a professional engineer to uh, work because uh, a chartered engineer is someone who can approve drawings, who can approve, uh, you know, who can cre uh, create or uh, <clears throat> any buildings for civil engineers. Okay and any plant piping system and everything only a chartered engineer is someone who's allowed to do because he has been approved by an institution okay okay yeah. hey, and so hey. alongside this i also looked for uh, rena is there uh, royal institute of naval architects but that was uh, I, I i did not dig too much into it but that i think that was not applicable to me as i was not a naval architect then i imarest was one of the very uh, common this thing which most of the people are doing and uh, then the third thing which came, because I always thought that IMRS is in UK, so we must have something in India. Then I kept looking and I found IEI. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. So, um, you know, through this video, what we would like to do is, um, through your experience, help others benefit from it and uh, see, um, you know, if they find value in this certification, then maybe they could consider this. Um, and so in this video, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit more about Chartered Engineer, a little bit about Institute of uh, Engineers. And uh, so if you can to uh, tell us more about Institute <coughs> of Engineers and, you know, um, so this, this one qualification of Chartered Engineer, is there any other qualification as uh, well? And which ones are more relevant for persons with our background? Okay. Uh, so for anyone uh, who's coming from an engineering background, every work organization, not only chartered engineer, but before that, you have to be a member or an associate member or a fellow of some of the one of the other institute. Now, IEI is like is the Indian Institute of Engineering, okay, the Institution of End, uh, Engineers India. So they are also offering associate members, members, and fellowships. 
so uh, there are different criteria you can go and look up on the iia website like for members it was 30 years minimum age and 15 years or 12 years of work experience then for uh, fellow it is 40 years of age and uh, relevant work experience i think 20 years or 15 years something like that so that can always be checked so one thing is that you become a member of this thing and then there that is only a membership so okay. uh, by that the entire idea of any engineering institution is to promote uh, development among engineers so that people have more peer networking okay. and uh, yeah. uh, so once you become a member of uh, member you can uh, they award you initials which are mie member of institute of engineers so like if you go for imarest you will get m imarest okay. member right. associate member will be am and fellow will be f so fellow is the uh, highest one Okay. then we come to chartered engineer or professional oh. engineer because a mere membership will not get you a, a perfect job or not what employers are actually looking for so <clears throat> we go for chartered engineer or professional engineer now the difference is that uh, a chartered engineer is continuously using his uh, sorry a professional engineer is has to continue renew his license like we do above a mu class 1 mu class 2 it is valid for 4 to 5 years and to get a professional engineer license it is even more difficult it is one level up above the chartered engineer and uh, for that you have to go through three rounds of interviews with the panel of experts in the iei and before that one written also you have to appear but that written can be waived depending on your qualification or your work experience now chartered engineer uh, for getting chartered engineer certification that is what i got you what you need is a relevant work experience in your field and the most important thing is that they are looking for a continuous professional development so okay. in our case uh, marine people we are uh, i put my uh, cp they want some proof of cpd continuous professional development i put my proofs at uh, class 4 license class 2 license i did not have class 1 license then then uh, my high voltage course lng course and various engine manufacturers course which we have done the entire idea that uh, institute is looking for is that the person is not in a brain dead job and for the last 13 15 years that he has just completed graduation he is doing one thing and not changing so they just want that you have to be continuously upgraded and uh, so one thing is that other thing is they are looking for your degree the complete transcript of the degree and uh, they are looking for every single grade in what were your core subjects what was your grade in that and uh, the time frame for once you submit the application before submitting the application i recommend to contact the institute you can contact via email or via phone call and uh, once you uh, once they accept your application after that also it takes around normally 5 to 6 months in my case it actually took me 13 months to get it done Okay. and the main reason was uh, because uh, i am from tolani and back then tolani used to give us a bits pilani degree okay so we had two degrees one was from tolani and the university degree was bits pilani okay yeah. and uh, the the college degree was the one which was having the transcript at the back side and the university degree was not having anything so that, that i got one query back also from them that can you give us some more proof that we don't understand what is bits pilani and what is uh, tmi please explain so i sent them an email uh, gave all the attachments or all the documents which were available with us and they accepted it okay so it took 13 months actually basically because they are having one approval committee meeting which happens every 5 to 6 months so in the first meeting they i think i got uh, they rejected by and in the second one they just approved so i so, just got in recently yeah great great so uh, basically the eligibility is that you need to be an engineer and basis the experience that you have and your age then you can apply for different levels of certificates yes. the, right. uh, that is about member for chartered engineer the most important is that you have been practicing your engineering and you are having continuous professional development correct correct and for being a professional engineer which is of the highest demand in uh, throughout the world professional uh -huh. engineer chartered engineer is uh, you know it's like acceptable it is like the easy way of right. being being big for professional engineer so now you are authorized and you are licensed and you know the powers of a chartered engineer inside india is that you can work uh, as a loss assessor and as a valuer in any banks or any financial institution or insurance companies people are working in pni club with chartered engineer certificates um, oh. i know people uh, and uh, then uh, a chartered engineer can even support high courts customs excise matlab i mean uh, courts up to high court so district court sessional court high court you can support them you can your uh, valuation can be taken as granted and then you can of course uh, you can make your own stamp that is for that goes for civil engineers and all that approval stamp for buildings construction bridges and everything and uh, the best part is you get more chances of better employment wherever awesome. you go awesome awesome no so what you told us is that what are the different level of qualifications 
uh, how can a person be qualified and also the advantages of, uh, advantage of uh, being, a uh, being a chartered engineer, right? right. Uh, now, uh, if we come to the maritime aspect of it, is there any thing different for a maritime professional or a, as a marine engineer or is, it's the same thing which, which other engineers also apply? It's the same thing which other engineers also apply for, but it's just that I think IEI does not have many marine engineers among their community. It is a community of engineers. So okay. IEI does not have many marine engineers. I know a few of them. I do not know the entire, uh, all the people. I do know a couple of them. Only two of them actually I know that who have done uh, chartered engineer from uh, IEI. Uh, they were he heading 15 different division of engineering. And I think uh, marine engineering has been a recent addition to them not very long ago. And that is one of the reasons I think which uh, took a little bit longer time. And the best part, because uh, as I said, that when we are applying for job in a Canada or US or UK, then work visa is one restriction. And second is that because they do not consider if you go for anywhere else outside the maritime industry, nobody cares if you have a class one license, class two license or not. They only want that. Have Are you a recognized engineer by air? Uh, this was a proper job requirement is there. Because oh. I was applying for, let's say, LNG downstreaming, uh, downstream LNG or upstream LNG industries. So there, there were a simple uh, requirement was there that are you a recognized engineer by a engineering institution? Okay, understood, understood. Yeah. Um, and so for applying of uh, for for this, you initially you, you just have to go on the website. Uh, is there a form that you have to download or uh... no you can just have a look at the requirements this is what i did i looked at the requirements i contacted the institute by email or by phone call you can do that and they will just accept that okay yes you are eligible so okay. you can apply but once you apply it is based on the de decision of the uh, committee whether or not you will get or, or not the okay. certification all right understood understood so uh, to all our viewers we will put in the chat window or in the comment section we will put the link of the of where you could find this uh, certification as well uh, which we'll of course uh, take from deepak um, so deepak um, if you can tell me about the process you, you said there were three rounds of interviews which happened right no no that was not for me that is for professional engineer okay. if you're going for professional for chartered engineers there are no interviews no. they're only assessing your qualification and okay. your uh, what do you say experience all right okay and, and what, what is the costing of it how much did you have to pay it, uh, i applied for membership as well as chartered engineer both together it costed around 34 to 35000 rupees plus gst so i think it's around 40000 somewhere it went uh, is it a lifelong uh, one yes. time? There are two kinds of chartered engineers. So once I got the chartered engineer, I, uh, now recently I have got one more link from them, which says that you can be a practicing chartered engineer. Okay. So practicing chartered engineer needs to validate this every five years. Okay. So that is a second certificate. And uh, being a chartered engineer, that certificate is so unique or what they say that they will not give you on soft copy. Okay. It will only come in hard copy with proper red seal. Uh, and then the, those initials which we were talking about is CENG India. Now, uh, that is Chartered Engineer uh, of, India, of India. So, uh, those initials are basically kind of, that is kind of a reward or an award to you. Like, you know, like PhDs are awarded doctorates. So, we are awarded CNG. And okay. CNG is Chartered Engineer and MI is Member of Institute of Engineers India. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, is, it is similar to what a Chartered Accountant is. He is just started with the ICAI. We are chartered with IEI. Understood. Understood. So um, I know you've just taken the membership, but um, uh, what are the networking opportunities that a person could have and what kind of skill enhancement, value addition yes. uh, that the institute would do? Yeah. So one uh, I uh, one institute, I'm just forgetting the name. I'll put it in the link or the chat box there, that uh, which is completely and solely run by IEI. It is an autonomous institute. It is in Hyderabad. And... Uh, <clears throat> So the, uh, that institute uh, has a lot of courses which are going on, okay, and you can access to, you can get access to those courses, and they are at very minimal cost because since it is a government body, they're at very minimal cost. I looked at the PG diploma, which was of two years, and it was costing around four lakh thirty thousand. Okay. Okay, so that's a very decent or reasonable price because it's a government institution after all. Then they are also, this is a new thing which IEI is just coming up, is that they are uh, they will help you in uh, career career prospects, like resume building and uh, exploring job. They are opening a job portal. Plus you get to, I, uh, this, they have told me that we will send you the links uh, slowly or stoner. 
uh, they, that is the link for uh, how to do peer networking. And right now, uh, I was actually, I'm also pursuing my post-graduation. So for that, uh, from the university from which I'm doing, they are al already allowing me the, they've given me some library materials. But apart from that, uh, even IEI will give you access to Springer. Springer is a very famous journal articles website. So you can access uh, any, most of the journal articles on Springer's. And there are many other options uh, in the link. I mean, I cannot list them all together in the link that will be there. Great, Deepak. So what we have covered is what is the institute? Um, uh, what are the qualifications that a person could get with certain amount of experience and uh, degree? Um, what are the advantages? How can the networking happen? How to apply? What are the costings? So yeah, I think pretty much we've covered, <clears throat> um, I, I think what most of us would like to know. Um, so yeah, to all the viewers, if you would like to possibly apply in the loss assessor's role, if you want to be impaneled in uh, as a valuer, you want to be in the impanelment for insurance companies, or maybe, you know, on the high court, uh, this is one degree which could help you. Plus, uh, you know, it always gives you another value addition. It, it could help you in getting a job in a classification society or, or, or any other similar places. So, yeah, um, thank you so much, Deepak, for uh, your time. Pleasure to connect. And I'm sure this will help a lot of uh, uh, marine engineers who might want to look at uh, different options. And thanks. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Gaurav. Thanks a lot. All right.